Hello everyone, this is Justin and Bruce with Aerofluid Handling Technical Support. Today we're going to be repairing a 1 inch metallic Pro Series pump. We are going to be converting a Pro Series pump with nitro balls and diaphragms to a PTFE ball and diaphragm material. So we're going to need the appropriate tools along with the appropriate Loctite and anti-seize. And you want to make sure that you always have your operator's manual and that you're using authentic aero parts. So today we're going to be using a 637-119-44-C PTFE fluid section repair kit and a 637-118-C air section repair kit. At Aero Safety First, before you start repairing your diaphragm pump, you want to make sure that you have the proper PPE. Today, we're going to be wearing our safety glasses as well as our steel toe shoes or boots due to the weight of the product. We're going to start by actually, you know what, I'm going to remove the manifold first here. Let me get the right socket. Turn this the right way and go. Okay, so we have our outlet manifold. On the diaphragm pump, typically the inlet is on the bottom and the outlet is on top on the standard diaphragm pump. We have our nitro balls. Put those aside. Our polypropylene seats with our nitro O rings. On a standard repair kit, the seats are not included. Typically, the balls and diaphragms wear, uh, um, I should say, I don't want to say wear faster than the seats, but they don't wear as much as the balls and diaphragms would um, in, a, in most applications. So you want to make sure that you always check your hard parts. We want to check our seats, make sure where the ball sits, that there are no scuffs or scratches. You can put the ball on top of the seat and hold the light up to it and then look underneath to see if you get a good seal. Or you could put some product around it, something compatible with the balls and seats and see if it leaks through. We're going to flip this around here. We're going to remove the bottom manifold. You can see, as opposed to the top manifold, on the bottom, on the inlet side, the balls sit within the fluid cap, and on the outlet side, the top, the balls sit within the manifold. You always want to make sure that the ball is on top of the seat when you reassemble. We're going to remove our seats, balls, and O-rings. I'm going to flip this back over. That way it's nice and has a nice and uh, sturdy seat there. It's not going to move around when you take off the legs. This particular model, this metallic model, you can see that it has a grounding lug here. It is groundable. This particular model is ATEX certified. 
So when pumping flammable materials, materials, you always want to make sure that you properly ground the pump, the material hoses, control handle, any, any pump attachment to prevent um, ignition to the product being pumped. side you can see the gasket and o-ring here came off we're going to go ahead and dispose of these properly these will come in the 637118-c air section repair kit go to the back Go ahead and flip this back over. Now we're going to go ahead and remove our fluid caps. We have a fluid cap here and a fluid cap here. Get the right. There we go. Okay. Now remember, these were compressed, so they may be a little sticky or stick to the diaphragm. Whoop. Yep, that one came out. You can kind of hear it come apart. We're going to set our fluid caps aside. Now you can see here we have our diaphragm nut, our washer, and our nitrile diaphragm. Same on the other side. You're going to need two three quarter inch wrenches. You're going to want to hold each side. This wrench here, you can see it'll, I can use a table to hold it into place. And I'm going to go ahead and loosen this side here. Now it's loosed or removed from the diaphragm rod. Oh, there we go. I was just unthreading it out of the diaphragm. You can see here you have your diaphragm uh, nut as well as a nitrile O-ring. Nitrile in this case because our elastomers are nitrile on this model. So we're going to remove that and dispose of the O-ring because we're doing a fluid section rebuild as well as an air section. Set these aside. Put this up. Now we can remove our diaphragm and pull out the diaphragm rod on this side of the pump with the diaphragm. for a moment. You see our air cap. On the Pro Series model we see that the air caps as well as the center section or the center body are all one piece as opposed to the EXP series. We can see here our pilot valve, our pilot rod or spool our pressurized and exhaust port as air is pressurized into this chamber from your air inlet it'll cause diaphragms to push out and on the opposite side this particular port becomes exhaust and causes that diaphragm assembly to push in and you can see your washer here will hit your pilot valve 
your sensor pin and mechanically push that in which in turn will direct air from your pilot valve to the top end of your major valve which causes your pump to shift. We'll set that aside. Remove the diaphragm on this end. You may notice on this particular model, this nitrile diaphragm has a top hat design, is what I call it, or a non-convoluted design as opposed to our, some of our other diaphragms. In this case, it is PTFE with a Santa Preen backer. The diaphragms are already convoluted. I'm going to set this aside for a moment. You can see here on the diaphragm rod in the center, you have your wrench flats. Go ahead and take an adjustable wrench or the appropriate size wrench. In this case, we're going to use an adjustable wrench. We're going to want to, there we go, put that there. Take your three quarter inch wrench, and we're going to want to remove this diaphragm nut. Okay, back to our center section. We finished disassembling the fluid section. We're going to make our way into the air section, which consists of your major valve assembly, which runs internally here, as well as your pilot valve assembly, which runs internally within the center body. We already removed our caps. So we're going to go ahead and we'll first remove our pilot valve assembly. Take your Allen wrench here. We're going to loosen these up. We can dispose of these. We're going to replace those. We're going to take the snap ring pliers and we're going to remove this snap ring. The snap ring also comes in the repair kit. Anytime you remove these, it bends the ring a little bit and it um, ruins the integrity of the snap ring. So you want to always make sure you replace those on every repair. So you can see we have a O-ring here. We're going to want to remove that. That is also going to be replaced. This one is a little tight, so you want to make sure that you do not cut yourself while doing this. There we go. Remove that. You can dispose of that. Now you can push that through, actually. Push that down. You can remove it on the other side. And this is our pilot valve spool or piston. You can see here we have the same two Allen head screws we're going to remove and the snap ring. Oh, you can see our bushing came out, which is okay. There we go. Dispose of that. Set your bushings aside. We're going to need those later. Now, in, within the pilot valve assembly, you're going to pull out four O-rings and three spacers. Sometimes they come out pretty easy, but sometimes you need a blunt object or blunt end to push those out. In this case, I'm going to use the end of our ratchet. See if I can get those to come out here. Now the hard components here, the, the spacers, they are not included in the kit. You want to give them a good examination, make sure they're still in good shape. 
Make sure the legs are not bent, or, in, or the ring here, or the ring here. You can see your bore here. It's always good just to look down, make sure there's no scars or scratches in there as well. Remove our bushing. There we go. Diaphragm rod bushing. We can see that there's two seals here that we can replace. And this as well, you want to look down and make sure there's no scarring or scratching to the travel of the diaphragm rod. That completes the pilot valve disassembly. We'll go ahead and move to the major valve. The major valve consists of a spool and spacers as well. So we can we need a little help here with the o-ring pick, but be careful not to scratch the hard components. The seals we're going to replace. We want to be careful not to scratch the hard components. I'm going to there we go. Push the piston out on the other end and remove our spool. The spacers, you can see, well, you can't really quite see it from there, but where your piston sits, the bore here is slightly smaller than the bore on this side, and there's a lip within the bore there. So the spacers and washers can only come out one side. And that completes the disassembly of the Aero 1-inch metallic diaphragm pump. And you always, same with these stacks, you want to make sure the legs are in good shape. All of your hard components, you always want to give a good glance to make sure they're in good shape and do not need to be replaced. Thank you for watching.